Nation. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Absolutely. We are ready. WBAL Radio, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. WBAL Radio, Baltimore. We We read you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Great. Hello there from Baltimore, Maryland. This is Phil Yakubuski from WBAL Radio. How are things going up there, Terry? Well, they're going great. We have been here for a month now. We uh, launched just over four weeks ago, me, Samantha, and Anton. We joined our crewmates, uh, Butch, Yelena, and Sasha, and we're having a great time uh, getting a lot of work done up here on the station. What are some of the things that you are doing? Well, it seems like every day we do about 10 different things. Uh, there's a lot of science that we do, um, a lot of different types of science, material science, biology, uh, combustion science, the station's involved in some pretty cool astronomy experiments. There's a lot of maintenance that goes on um, that we have to work on different equipment. Butch and I worked on a thing called CEDRA, which is a carbon dioxide removal a couple weeks ago. Um, we're getting ready for some spacewalks, getting the spacesuits ready for some spacewalks that are coming up in about another month or two. And uh, of course, trying to stay in shape, there's a lot of exercise that goes on too. So it's, it's a pretty full day every day. That NASA for the first time emailed you a wrench as part of a 3D printer. Can you explain what that was like and what are you going to use that wrench for? Yeah, it's a pretty exciting when you think about the possibilities of being able to email, like you said, a file that will go into a printer and will print out a tool that we can use to fix and implement, or maybe, you know, in space, things get away from you. There's, you know, it floats and things disappear. So to replace a tool that you lost. So that was a small wrench. It's a prototype. We'd love to use it, would love to, but of course we have to pack it up and send it back to Earth so they can uh, analyze it and check it out. So they're not gonna let us use it regrettably. Can you tell us something about, and this is for either one of you, what has surprised you about the experience of being in space? Were you totally prepared for everything? That's a great question. Um, for both Butch and I, this is our second flight. On our first flight, we flew on the space shuttle as pilots, and now here we are on a six-month-long, uh, long-duration mission in space. And I think the thing for me that I've noticed over the last week or two is how I'm getting even more adapted and more able to fly and float and do things in space. On the shuttle flight, it was only two weeks long, and there was a steep learning curve and that had not peaked out, and I'm still learning the basics of how to fly, and, and I can already tell that I'm getting better than I did on that short-duration flight. Terry, we're your hometown station. You're from uh, Maryland. Talk to us about who you want to say hello to, especially for Christmas, and what's it going to be like spending Christmas in space? That's a great question. My family's all back there. My mom and uh, stepdad are actually down in Texas for Christmas with, uh, with my family there. But I have to say hi to my aunts and uncles and um, Aunt Helen and Aunt Pat. My cousin Kristen, she just had a new, uh, a new baby, little Cameron and uh, Landon. And man, I got all kinds of relatives back there. But it, I do miss Maryland. I've been trying to get some good pictures of it, but it's been cloudy every time we fly over during the daytime. But one of these days, I'm going to get a good shot. And uh, and uh, rooting for the Ravens, man. They had a rough, uh, rough game this last weekend, I think. Were you able to watch the game yesterday? We, we were. We, we, we can watch bits and pieces of it. Um, whenever we're in the right satellite coverage, they can uplink us the game live uh, so we can see bits and pieces. And on Saturday night, I was able to watch the Air Force Academy uh, Commander-in-Chief Trophy winners. I, I was able to watch them play the uh, win their bowl game. So, But again, only, only little bits and pieces. But it's pretty amazing the, um, the support that they give us being able to watch live sporting events or news or whatever. What are you missing about Maryland? And how are you going to spend Christmas in space? That's easy, sweet, cr sweet corn and crabs. Um, and Christmas is going to be good. I think Butch and I are going to we'll do a little Christmas Eve service up here. And and uh, Butch got so uh, stockings for us all, and uh, I've got some presents. And so I think we're going to have a little gift exchange and and eat some um, irradiated turkey and dehydrated mashed potatoes and cornbread dressing. And so it should be should be it should be a good Christmas day. And actually, we'll get to celebrate it, you know 
and 16 times because we get 16 sunrises every day here. So we'll have Christmas morning 16 times on the 25th. And then we get to celebrate it again on January 7th because that's the that's the Russian uh, Russian Christmas is on January 7th. So half of our crew is Russian, so we'll have it again a few weeks later. You talked earlier about the experiments you have been uh, conducting up there, and this is for either one of you. Anything surprise you uh, as of now, and uh, what are you most looking forward to? Obviously, the spacewalk will be pretty neat. Yeah, the spacewalk, spacewalks, plural, are, are definitely big on our horizon. Um, here's something su surprising, and we all know physics, and we learn the basics of physics and inertia and that kind of thing, but... Um, when when you rotate things in space, you can see how they behave. And you, if you spin uh, an iPad, for example, today Butch and I were doing this. You spin an iPad in certain directions, it spins fine. But if you spin it in one certain axis, it it's, it flips a couple times and then it rotates itself, and it flips in different direction a couple times and it rotates back. And it's uh, it's cool to see Mr. Newton's laws in action up here in space. It's something you just can't do on Earth. Uh, we can see it in, for real. So that's, it wasn't an official NASA experiment, but it was a neat, a neat demonstration of physics up here. Other than the spacewalks, anything else that you're looking forward to? I am looking forward to spending more time looking out the window. I've been here for a month already, and I feel like I just haven't spent any time. Uh, I love taking pictures of the Earth and of stars. And um, there's just lots and lots and lots more pictures I want to ta take. And I try and tweet out uh, when I can at the uh, Astro Terry and Butch has an Astro Butch uh, hashtag. And so um, p photography and just looking out the window is, is uh, probably by far the best thing to do up here. And for those of us who don't know, does a regular camera work in space? It does, actually. We have just tens and tens and tens of uh, big like professional cameras the kind you see at the football games we've got camcorders all over the station and and uh they do work they're all digital of course and so we can downlink the pictures instantly and um uh yeah that you're, you're that's a good question so, some things don't work but cameras do work that's good and this is my question before uh, we have to go but what is the food like up there uh, you mentioned irradiated beef and and uh, freeze-dried mashed potatoes is the food any good Actually, to be honest, perfectly honest, the food is really good. I was, uh, I sent an email to our food folks yesterday telling them how good it is, and it's it's way better than anything I would be cooking for myself if I were a bachelor. That's for sure. But it, it's a good variety. They got different kinds of meats and vegetables and desserts and beverages, and um, it's uh, it's 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 actually pretty good. I think we're spoiled. But you're looking forward to some Maryland crabs and some corn when you get back, right? Well, yes, it's not Maryland crabs or corn, that's for sure, but it's not bad. All right. Um, Watermelon, I, I too. I, I, have time, I have time for one more question, I believe they're telling me. You talked about looking out the window. That, that view is something you just can't seem to absorb enough, right? It's not, and I wish I could. I just wish everybody could see it because, you know, I had seen pictures from space my whole life since I was a kid. I've been looking at books and pictures and the, it just doesn't do it justice. Um, the one thing I've noticed is I see colors that I've never seen before, shades of blue especially. Um, the oxygen in our atmosphere and in the water uh, really makes things blue on Earth. And that's a really small part. If you look in the other direction, it's nothing but black in all directions. And so it's pretty cool to see. It's like being up in the heavens looking down on creation. It's, it's an amazing thing, and you just can't describe it with words. Uh, Are you hoping for one more trip to space after this? Oh, yeah, uh, for sure, yeah. You know, I'd love to go to the moon is what I would really love to do, but we'll see how that works out. We just had our launch of the Orion capsule, which is uh, one piece of the puzzle that we're going to need to go out into the solar system. So that was, that was pretty exciting a couple weeks ago. We actually watched that live from our, uh, from our dining room area. That was, that was kind of neat to see that from space. All right, Air Force Colonel Terry Virts, who, of course, is from Columbia in our area and crew member commander butch wilmore thanks for joining us here on wbal from the international space station 205 miles above the earth thanks guys and merry christmas thanks merry christmas to everybody down there in maryland and uh, go orioles and go ravens station this is houston acr and that concludes the wbal radio portion of the event 
Please stand by for a voice check from the CBS This Morning. Okay. Okay, Sta Rich, check in. All right. Station, this is CBS This Morning. How do you hear us? We hear you loud and clear. How do you hear us? We hear you great, and you guys look great. Yeah, understood. Keep the wall clear. All right, we're almost ready here. Stick with us. There we go. We're, we're on, we got all day. No problem. Three, two. We recently showed you new satellite images from NASA showing how bright the holiday lights are in cities across the country. It is a familiar sight for two astronauts who will spend Christmas aboard the International Space Station. The mission commander, Captain Barry Wilmore, and flight engineer, Colonel Terry Vertz, joining us now from orbit. Well, thanks for floating with us this morning, guys. How are you? Oh, our pleasure. We're doing great. Uh, having a great time doing a lot of things up here, getting ready for the holidays, spending it together. Of course, we'll be separated from our families, but we've got each other, and we've got some plans for some gift exchanges and such, and just celebrate it much like we would back home. Now, I see some elf shoes on your feet, and I think I see what looks like a Christmas tree. What else are you guys doing up there to stay festive? <laughs> Well, we've got some stockings. Butch got us each, each crew member a stocking. It's down in the U.S. lab. Uh, we have some Santa hats and some other gear that, that we've got stored away right over there in the other module. So uh, we've got, you know, many, we've got some turkey and mashed potatoes uh, in, the, in the kitchen. So we've got some uh, traditional Christmas stuff here. I like the sort of upside down Christmas tree look. That's a new thing. I got to try that at home. Um, you guys, you, you guys both have kids. How do you stay in touch with them this time of year? Uh, you know, NASA's great. They they afford us the opportunity to do video links once a week, so we get to stay in touch that way, and it's fantastic to see them. And and you know, my 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 daughters are seven and ten, so I actually see them changes and lose teeth and whatnot from here. So it's very unique, and it's a very very uh, good thing that NASA does. So we're able to stay in, in close touch. I can't imagine the story she gets to tell at school in terms of where her dad is for the holidays. But we want to ask you about the actual mission itself. Why are you guys up there right now? Well, uh, we're on a six-month mission here in, in Earth orbit, and the primary job is to get research done. The space station is a national laboratory, and there's lots of different science from all the different disciplines, biology, physics, material science, combustion science, even astronomy. And so on a daily basis, we're doing different kind of experiments. We're setting them up, taking them down, making sure that, the, that they're maintained. Uh, and along those lines, we also have to maintain the station. It's a million-pound vehicle, very, very, very complicated, lots of uh, equipment to keep running. And so a big part of our job is to keep it running, which occasionally requires spacewalks. And Butch and I have three scheduled spacewalks in February, uh, again, to keep the station maintained properly and also to get it ready for uh, future American capsules that will be bringing crews here in the coming years. So it's a busy job, uh, and on top of all that, we need to keep ourselves in shape to counteract the effects of weightlessness. So it's definitely a full-time job, and it's a lot of fun. Butch, you guys made some news last week when you, uh, you printed a 3D wrench from a design emailed to you from Earth. What kind of uh, impact are, are things like that going to have on the mission up there? Well, it could actually re re change everything. I mean, you may have a part that fails that you don't have on board, and the opportunity to print small parts and install them and even, in and even print out the special tools that you could use to install those parts. So the, you know, the, the possibilities are truly endless with what we can do as, as this technology goes forward. We're just doing baby steps now. It's just the, the start. And, uh, you know, printed out a wrench last week, as you mentioned. And uh, it's, it's, like I said, just getting going. So it's, it's the... The, the future is bright. Kara, I want to ask you about these amazing images we've seen on Twitter, images of sort of the Earth from clearly an amazing uh, viewpoint. When you take each of these, are you still as amazed as the first one? It, it's, it's amazing. I wish I could describe it with words. Um, I've seen pictures from space ever since I was a kid. I had space books and stuff. And the first time I looked out of a window on the space shuttle a couple years ago, 
I just couldn't believe it. I literally took my breath away, uh, saw colors that I'd never seen before. And every time you take pictures, it's a, it's a brand new experience. It's, it's kind of funny, usually it's a flail. You, you go in the cupola, which is a seven windowed dome module that we have that has an unbelievable view of the earth and stars. And you go in there and you're like, oh wow, there's like yesterday we were flying over Asia. There was Beijing and Korea and Japan and you have to, it's a flail. You grab the camera and try to set it up real quick for night or day or whatever you're doing and take some pictures because we're going over 17,000 miles an hour or so. Beijing, Korea, and Japan last about, you know, two minutes and then you're gone. So taking the pictures is great, but it's every time you do it, you're just grabbing the camera as fast as you can. Well, they're really stunning images, guys. Is there anything particular you miss about home at this point in time or being back on Earth? To be quite honest, obviously you miss the, the your family, being with them. That's the that's one thing, of course, we all would miss. But it's such a different environment up here. New experiences every single day. And to be honest with you, there's no longing for anything. I don't long for a hamburger or anything like that because the food up here is not bad. It's a different variety. So the newness of it all is what makes it truly, truly special. So, yeah, no, not missing much. We want to ask you one quick re-ask you one question just because we had a little bit of an issue with, the, with it coming over. What exactly are you guys up there doing right now? What is the mission? So the mission that we're doing right now on our six-month expedition to the space station is science. Our, our job here is to do science, and there's lots of different disciplines that we're uh, investigating, biology, chemistry, physics, material science, combustion science, even astronomy. And so on a daily basis, we're doing various experiments. We're either setting them up, changing out samples, downlinking imagery, uh, maintaining the, the machines in the, this laboratory that we have, this national laboratory of the International Space Station. And along with that, the second half of that mission is maintaining the station. It's a million pound vehicle, very complicated, lots of different modules, international. We're in a Japanese module right now, the European module's there. Of course, there's a big American segment, and the Russian segment is a very big part of this space station. So maintaining this on a daily basis is, uh, is a big job that we have. Um, getting ready for some spacewalks is very important. Butch and I are going to go out and prepare the station for future American human vehicles, crewed vehicles, that are in February we're doing these spacewalks, and these vehicles will be uh, flying in the next few years, we hope. And so every day there's a, a different challenge. On top of all that, we have to keep ourselves in shape with a lot of exercise to counteract the effects of weightlessness. So it's definitely a full-time job that we have. Well, keep those stunning images coming, guys. They're really beautiful. Safe travels up there. Merry Christmas. Captain Wilmore, Colonel Burtz, thanks so much for joining us from Orbit this morning. Merry Christmas to everybody in America and everybody down on Earth. You want to <laughs> <laughs> Gary, have you just mastered saying still, or are you tethered to something right now, and, and he's just free-floating? No, there you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do this on Earth. That must never get old. No, you sure can. No, it doesn't. You mentioned our tree was on the ceiling, but our tree is only on the ceiling half the time. The other half of the time, it's actually on the floor, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like it better upside down. It's a new view. Yeah, this makes doing maintenance very easy. I, Butch and I were just down in our logistics module trying to find a thing, and it's this big, giant wall full of probably a 1,000 pounds of stuff, and we were just floating in and out of all the different bags, and it's, it's very yeah. handy to be able to float. <laughs> do you get seasick? Is it a, do you start to get nauseous after a bit? Uh, actually, no. Terry was, you know, we had this centrifuge where we had to get some water out of a bag, and Terry was spinning me so I could get the water to the end of the bag, and there's no nauseous, no nothing, no, not at all. Your, the body just adapts to it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you bet. Thank you all. Oh, it's synchronized. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's synchronized. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, WBAL Radio and CBS This Morning. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.